Hello everyone, welcome back to Physics HQ. This is Professor Sandeep, your tutor for the class 12 series. Starting with the lecture series of solving MCQs and sums of class 12 physics. Today we'll be covering MCQs of chapter 1, Rotational Dynamics. So let us check out the first MCQ. When seen from below, the blades of a ceiling fan are seen to be revolving anti-clockwise and their speed is decreasing. Select correct statement about the direction of its angular velocity and angular acceleration. These are the options that we have. Now to find the direction of angular velocity, first of all, let us understand what is right hand thumb rule that will define the direction of angular velocity. Right hand thumb rule says that if we curl the fingers of our right hand in the direction of the motion of the particle along the circle, then the thumb will point to the direction of angular velocity omega. Now as per the question, we are supposed to observe the blades of a ceiling fan from below and after observing it was found that it is revolving in an anti-clockwise direction, right? So it is revolving in an anti-clockwise direction over here. Now if we apply the right hand thumb rule over here and if we curl the fingers of our right hand in the direction of the motion of the blades, we will find that the thumb is pointing downwards and therefore angular velocity over here will be pointing downward. Talking about angular acceleration alpha, if omega increases, alpha points in the same direction as omega. And if omega decreases, alpha points in a direction opposite to omega. Now in the question they have given that speed is decreasing. Therefore, we have the second option with us where if omega is decreasing, then alpha points in the opposite direction to omega. Now here omega is pointing downwards so alpha will be pointing upwards and therefore the correct option is option B angular velocity downwards and angular acceleration upwards. Hope you understood this. Let us check out the next MCQ. A particle of mass 1 kg tied to a 1.2 meter long string is whirled to perform vertical circular motion under gravity. Minimum speed of the particle is 5 meter per second. Consider the following statements. Maximum speed must be phi root 5. Difference between maximum and minimum tensions along the string is 60 Newton. Select the correct option whether P is correct or Q is correct or both are correct or both are in correct. So for a particle which is performing vertical circular motion, please understand the velocity at the top will always be minimum for that particular motion and it is given over here as 5 meter per second. Velocity at the bottom will be maximum because when the particle comes down it gains velocity and at the bottom it has maximum velocity. Now we are supposed to verify whether this is equal to phi root phi or not. First of all what we will do is we will check whether this given velocity at the top is equal to critical minimum speed or not and critical minimum speed is given by the formula root of rg which is the minimum velocity that the particle should have at the top so that the vertical circular motion is maintained. So this is equal to root of 1.2 into g ka value is 10. So this will give us root of 12 which is approximately 3.5 and which is definitely not equal to 5. Therefore this is not that critical minimum speed and therefore we cannot apply the formula of critical minimum speed at the bottom which is given by the formula of root phi rg so that the vertical circular motion is maintained. Over here we will be finding the velocity at the bottom by the law of conservation of energy which says that sum of kinetic energy and potential energy at the top of the particle is equal to kinetic energy and potential energy at the bottom. So kinetic energy at the top will be given by half mv t square velocity at the top Potential energy at the top is given by mg into height at the top. So at the topmost point, the height will be nothing but the diameter of this circle which is equal to twice the radius. This is equal to kinetic energy at the bottom which is half mv b square velocity at bottom. And lastly, potential energy at the bottom will be equal to mg and height over here is 0. So let us put it over here. Let us cancel out all the m's in the terms and multiply it with 2 everywhere. So we got vt square plus 4rg. This is equal to vb square. Let us find out vb square. This is equal to vt ka square is phi ka square to 4 into r is 1.2 g is 10. 
so this will give us 25 plus 48 which is 73 so we got vb square as 73 so velocity at the bottom is root of 73 which is definitely not equal to 5 root 5 meter per second therefore statement p is incorrect statement Q talks about difference between tensions. So tension at the bottom is maximum minus tension at the top is minimum. This is given by the formula 6mg. Let us put the values over here. M ka value is 1, G ka value 10. So this is equal to 60 Newton. Therefore the second statement Q is correct and the correct option that we have to select over here is option B. Only the statement Q is correct. Hope you all understood this. Let us check out the next MCQ. Select correct statement about the formula of moment of inertia in terms of mass and some of its parameters such as radius and length. The options are different objects must have different expression for their moment of inertia. Let me tell you this option is incorrect because for a uniform disk and a axis which is transverse to it, moment of inertia is given by half m r square. And similarly for a hollow right circular cone, Again, moment of inertia about this axis is given by half m r square. Therefore, this first statement is incorrect. Let us see what is the next statement. Next statement says that when rotating about their central axis, a hollow right circular cone that we just discussed and a disk have same expression for moment of inertia. So this statement is correct and we can go ahead. In a certain unit, the radius of gyration of a uniform disk about its central and transverse axis is root of 2.5. Its radius of gyration about a tangent in its plane must be. And these are the options. For a uniform disk about its central and transverse axis, moment of inertia over here is given by half m r square. Now let me tell you there is one more method of writing the formula of moment of inertia in terms of radius of gyration and that is given as m k square. Okay. So over here what we can do is we can cancel out this m and if you see they have given radius of gyration over here which is root of 2.5 by which we can get r ka value. Okay. So what we can write is r square is equal to 2 times k square which gives you r equal to root 2 k which is root 2 into root of 2.5 which is root of 5. So you got radius of disk as root of 5. We want to find this radius of gyration about a tangent to its plane. So this is the plane of the uniform disk and let us say there is a tangent over here and for this tangent we need to find out what is radius of gyration. Okay. So again we will be using this method over here. So moment of inertia can be written in two forms. One is mk square and another one is in terms of radius for this particular axis moment of inertia is given by 5 by 4 mr square. So let me cancel out m over here. Got k square is equal to 5 by 4 r square. So k will be root of 5 by 4 into r. So what we have is root of 5 root of 5 divided by 4. Root of 5 root of 5 will be root of 25 by 4 which we can write it as 5 by 2. So 25 ka root is 5 and 4 ka root is 2 which gives us 2.5 units. So the option is option B. Next question is consider following cases. A planet revolving in an elliptical orbit a planet revolving in a circular orbit. Principle of conservation of angular momentum comes in force in which of these? Only P, only Q, both P and Q, neither P nor Q. So let me tell you over here, principle of conservation of angular momentum applies to both planet revolving in elliptical as well as circular orbit. Let us see the next MCQ. A thin walled hollow cylinder is rolling down an incline without slipping. At any instant, the ratio of rotational kinetic energy to translational to total kinetic energy is these are the options. Now, the ratio of rotational kinetic energy to translational kinetic energy to total kinetic energy is given by k square by r square is to 1 is to 1 plus k square by r square. So from this we understand that we need to find this ratio of k square by r square for a hollow cylinder. Now let me tell you for a thin walled hollow cylinder 
k square by r square is equal to 1. Let me also explain you how we got this k square by r square equal to 1. We know that moment of inertia ka formula for a thin walled hollow cylinder is given as m r square. And if we write the formula of moment of inertia in terms of radius of gyration m k square, then from this what we have is m and m gets cancelled. And what we are left with is k square by r square is equal to 1. So let us put up this value over here. So what we get is 1 is to 1 is to 1 plus 1 which is 2. So the final ratio that we have is 1 is to 1 is to 2. So the correct option over here is option A. Hope you all understood this. Thank you for your time. If you are finding this lecture series useful then show us your appreciation by clicking on the like button and don't forget to share it with your friends and classmates. As you know based on your feedback and suggestions we will be covering key concepts under our 5 minutes lecture series of class 12. So please feel free to let us know the topic you want us to cover. See you all in the next class. This is Professor Sandeep from Physics HQ signing off.